What's up everybody and welcome to part 5 of my coding a decision tree classifier from scratch video series. In the previous videos we built all those helper functions and now we can finally build our actual decision tree algorithm. Before we start however we first have to determine how are we going to actually represent the tree that this uh, algorithm is supposed to create and I decided to use a dictionary for that. And this dictionary only has one key and that key is the question that we're going to ask. So in this case the key, the key would be a pattern width smaller or equal to 0 0.8 and the value for this key then would be a list that contains only two elements. Uh, the first one is going to be the yes answer and the second one is going to be the no answer. And those elements in turn can only be one of two things. So either it's a class, so in this case it would be a string saying iris setosa, or it is another question which means that it is another dictionary. And the key for that dictionary would then be pattern width, uh, pattern width smaller or equal to 1.65. And obviously this uh, dictionary would also contain a list with two elements. And since I don't want to type everything out, here I've already created that tree using that kind of representation. So let's copy that and paste it into this notebook. And now to really make clear how this uh, tree is structured, the, uh, so to say, fundamental unit of that tree is a dictionary where the key is a question and the value is a list where the first element is the yes answer and the second element is the no answer. And the whole tree is made up of such dictionaries. So we can also call this dictionary a subtree. And as I said, the whole tree is then made up of such subtrees so in this diagram, the first subtree would be this one, the second this, and the third would be this one. And as we see later on, uh, the goal of this part of the algorithm will be to basically create such a subtree. So now let's start to build the actual decision tree algorithm. So let's create another subheading for that. Oops, and here we're going to say algorithm algorithm <clears throat> and let's call this function simply decision tree algorithm and in contrast to all those helper functions uh, we won't pass in a numpy 2d array but instead we're going to pass in a data frame and the reason for that is that I want to make the API for using that decision tree algorithm as simple as possible so if I scroll back up to the beginning of the notebook where we specified um, the API that we want to create, here I want to be able to just pass in this da uh, training data frame into the decision tree algorithm and that way you don't have to first change it to a NumPy 2D array. But that obviously then means that we have uh, to transform this data frame into a NumPy 2D array within this function. And as we can see in the diagram, this function is going to be a recursive function. So a function that uh, can potentially call itself many times. And we also know that all those helper functions, they operate on a NumPy 2D array. And obviously then they also output a NumPy 2D array. So or already after the first recursive call of the function, this df variable won't be a pandas data frame, but it's already a numpy 2d array. So we only have to transform this uh, df variable to a numpy 2d array in the first call of the function. And therefore, we're going to pass in another parameter to this function and it's called counter. And the default value will be zero. And then we're going to write um, if that counter is zero, so it's equal to zero, so in the first call of the function, then we're going to say 
our data is equal to df dot values. And if the counter is not zero, so uh, when we are not in the first call of the function, we're going to simply say data is equal to df because then this df variable, as I said, will already be a numpy to the array. And this might seem a little bit strange because, or not because, this might seem a little bit strange, um, but um, I want to do it this way just to make sure that if one reads the code, one is always able to tell what the underlying structure of a variable is. So for example, that this uh, df variable is a data frame and that this data variable is a numpy to the array. In this way, we can take advantage of the convenience of working with uh, pandas data frames. For example, uh, in functions where speed is not a concern, uh, like it was the case with those uh, helper functions. And later on, this df variable will also come in handy within this function. So let's just call this block of code simply our data preparations. And now we can finally start to build the actual uh, decision tree algorithm. And since this is a recursive function, we have to start off with the base case. So the stopping condition that finally uh, gets the algorithm to a stop so that it doesn't call itself or keeps calling itself infinitely. And as we can see um, in this diagram, the base case is this function. So the data pure function, because if it is true, then we're going to go this way and then reach the stop field. So we're going to say if check purity of our data, and this function simply returns a Boolean. So if the data is pure, it will return a true. And then we're going to call this classify function. So we say classification equals classify, oops, classify data. We pass in our data and then we simply return this classification. And that's already our base case. And then if the data is not pure, then we reach or we enter this recursive part of the function. So let's write another comment here and say recursive part. And this is where it can somewhat uh, can get somewhat complicated as is typical when dealing with uh, recursion. So to really wrap your head around how this uh, algorithm works, after my explanation, which I give to try I try to give as coherent as possible, you really have to think through this recursive part on your own and also at your own speed. So that being said, let's start with the easy things first. So we're gonna first increase our counter by one and then we're going to run all those helper functions. So let's create another comment. So those are now our helper functions. And first we're going to run this potential splits function. So we say potential splits equals get potential splits and we pass in our data. And then we run this lowest over entropy function, which should determine uh, the, uh, the split that results in the lowest over entropy, so the best split. And this split then is determined by two uh, characteristics. The first one is the split column, and the second one is the split value. And we're going to say those equal to uh, determine best split. And here we pass in our data, and then obviously the potential splits. And then finally, we're going to split our data based on this split into a data below and data above. So we're going to say data below and data above equal split data. And we pass in our data and then uh, the split column and the split value. So split column and split value. And this now was the easy part. And now we can think about uh, how, uh, how we are going to actually uh, build such a tree. And therefore, what we're going to create in each recursive call of the function. So we know that the whole tree is made up of such subtrees. And then obviously 
we have to create such a subtree within our function. So let's think about how to do that for the simplest possible scenario, which would be um, a, de a decision tree that only has one subtree. So let's say, for example, that there would be no isovaginica flaws and only isotosa and isovaginica. Then uh, this one split would be enough to uh, classify any new unknown flower because if the pattern width of that new flower is below 0.8, then it's clearly in isotosa. If it is above that, it's clearly in isovaginica. And the resulting decision tree would look like this. So now let's try to create uh, such a subtree for this uh, situation. So we're going to write another comment and we're going to say instantiate subtree. And since we need to know this question as the key for the subtree, let's first create a variable called question. And the critical elements of the question are first you know, this feature and then also this value and those we get from our determine best split uh, function. So to create this question, we're going to use make use of the string method format. So we're going to say a string, then we pass in a placeholder, which is denoted by those braces. And then we say space uh, is equal or smaller to space. And then the second space holder, a uh, placeholder. And then on that string, we say dot format and here we pass in our split column and split split value. It just now creates this question. So with that, we can now create our subtree and we simply say subtree equals a dictionary where the key is our question and the value is an empty list. And to that empty list, we now want to append the yes and the no answer. And to get those answers, so let's write another comment. So find answers. And now to get those answers, we have to rerun the algorithm so that we eventually get to this uh, classify function. So this is the recursion or the recursive part of the algorithm. So to create now the yes answer, we have to run the decision tree algorithm uh, on our data below. So we're going to pass in the data below and also our counter, which we increased here. And what this now does, it runs this function again. And then since the counter will be one, this code won't be executed, but then the data will be pure. So we reach this base case and the function will return a classification which in this case is uh, a string that says Aristotosa. And then in the same way, we can determine the no answer. So let's just copy and paste that and then write no answer. And here we obviously pass in our data above. And those are now our two answers for this question. And now we simply can append them to this list. So we say subtree equals, uh, not equals, subtree brackets, question, append the yes answer. In the same way we can append the no answer. So let's just copy that, paste it, and write no answer. So now we have um, appended those two answers to that subtree. So now we can simply return that subtree. And that's already our decision tree algorithm function. So let's see if it works for this scenario. So we're going to write, we're we going to say the tree equals decision tree algorithm. And we pass in our train da training data frame. And now to exclude the Iris Virginica flowers, we're going to say brackets train df label should not be equal to iris virginica. virginica and then let's print the tree so if i run this now we should get such a subtree where we have one question and then a list with two 
uh, answers. So let's run this. And indeed we get such a dictionary. So this uh, function seems to work for this case. So now let's test if it also works if we pass in all of our data. So let's run this. And indeed it returns something that looks like uh, such a subtree, uh, such a example tree. So now let's use the pretty print function. So that's a little bit e more easy to read. And I think now it gets clear that this function creates a decision tree that really makes sense. So now let's uh, consider a slightly more complex example than this one to see what the decision tree algorithm is actually doing. So we're going to look at a decision tree that has two layers, so two subtrees. So if we run this function, in this case, we again first uh, enter this recursive part and create our first subtree. And then we run a decision tree algorithm again to get the yes answer, which will then be an isotosa string. So, so far everything was the same, but now if we run the decision tree algorithm another time, then in this case, um, the data won't be pure. So we reach again the recursive part of the function. And then we create a second subtree. And then just like was the case with this more simpler version, we're going to append uh, those two answers as the yes and no answer to the second subtree. And then we return the second subtree uh, for this function. And then the second subtree will be the no answer for our first subtree. And that first subtree is then the tree that we're going to return and which is then finally our uh, final decision tree. And this is what I meant when I said that it can be quite confusing when dealing with uh, recursion. So really make sure that you think through this example again on your own to really understand what the algorithm is doing. Because uh, the general logic, how we created this tree, applies to basically any arbitrary number and combinations of uh, subtrees. And this is now our final decision tree algorithm. And now I would like to make some changes to it. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.